muscle wasting on GLP-1 medication. Is it really a problem? I'll give you my opinion as an obesity medicine physician. Let's go. Hi, I'm Dr. Megan. I'm an obesity medicine physician and weight loss coach helping you cut through the pseudoscience and confusion in weight care. My approach combines evidence-based medicine with real behavioral change. So you don't just take medications, you actually transform your health. Let's talk about what's going on with people's muscles when they are taking a GLP-1 medication. This question comes up a lot. I'm going to have a lot of references if you want to read more about this at the end. If you have questions at the end, please let me know. First of all, it's really important to know what is being measured when people are talking about the terms. I was at one of the obesity medicine conferences this year and body composition was one of the lecturers and it was done by Dr. Grant Tinsley, who is a PhD, who is a professor, PhD, who does a lot of research in this area. You can look him up on PubMed. He has a lot of publications, really well done. And one of the things that he was very frustrated with is how interchange, how people use so many different terms to describe things, and it may be a little misleading in terms of results. So, Basically, when you have a bioimpedance exam, like the scale you step on and you hold something and it does the electrical current to give you the body composition, or if you're doing the DEXA scan, they are measuring fat mass and fat-free mass, which is also called lean mass. But you can't get skeletal muscle Skeletal muscle and lean mass or skeletal muscle and fat-free mass are not exactly the same. Fat-free mass or lean mass just means everything that's not fat. So it does mean skeletal muscle. It also means connective tissue. It also means blood vessels. It also means fluid in the body. So there are a lot of things that it includes in addition to skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle can really best be approximated by an MRI or a CT scan. Now, a lot of research studies don't actually use an MRI or a CT scan for their body composition results. They're usually using a bioimpedance scale or um, a DEXA scan, which is, I love DEXA scans. I've made videos about them. They are great, but they don't tell you exactly the skeletal muscle. So this is a little misleading because if, because when people lose weight, a lot of times they do have a decrease in lean body mass or fat-free mass as well. I like to think of it as sort of like collateral damage, um, but a lot of times that does go down, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all of that is skeletal muscle. And we don't usually know because it's only being reported by a, like a DEXA scan and not an MRI or a CT scan. So that is a really important distinction to make. So what you really want, which we don't really have yet, we a little bit, but we don't have a substantial body of evidence yet that shows you looking at patients with overweight and obesity in terms of weight loss on GLP-1 and also looking at MRI studies in terms, or CT studies in terms of muscle mass change and also um, muscle quality. So there are different ways you can measure muscle because it's not just about how big is the muscle, how small is the muscle, it's also is the muscle getting better? Because if the muscle is a little bit smaller but better, that might actually improve somebody's quality of life. So you also not, you don't just wanna look at the size, but also muscle quality, and that can be assessed through something like grip strength. But anyway, that is not where we are right now. I'm sure we will have a lot more in the future. This is, of course, just the very beginning of this enormous branch of medicine um, in terms of the obesity medicine research as a whole. I'm gonna run through a couple studies here um, quickly. Um, but I will leave all the references down below. So you can do a deep dive if you would like to, but I'm gonna give you just the top line info here. So there was a semolene study for people who are on semaglutide that did show a small decrease in lean mass, this was with the DEXA, that stabilized pretty early on, but also a significant improvement in hand grip strength, which was an indicator of muscle quality. There was the um, New England Journal uh, Liraglutide and Exercise Study that showed people who took Liraglutide 
and exercised at the same time actually preserved their muscle mass. And again, that was um, preserved their lean mass. And again, that was measured by DEXA. There was this surmount one follow-up study that showed that looked at patients uh, in that study who had taken terzepatide and fat mass on average was 33% and lean mass loss was about 11% for people on terzepatide and for people who were on placebo, it was um, lean mass lost was 3%. Um, and then there was a surpass three MRI study which looked at people who, this was people who were on terzepatide and who also had diabetes. Not exactly the same, the same study population, but they looked at, they did MRI studies on thigh muscle, fat infiltration, muscle volume, um, and they did find that in the groups of patients, the groups of people who were on terzepatide, there was um, a significant decrease in the fat infiltration of the muscle, so like that marbling of muscle, um, and also actually a significant um, decrease in muscle volume, um, but they didn't look at muscle qualities. And actually, when you look at the actual numbers, um, even though the muscle volume loss was statistically significant, it was still pretty small. Um, so that would have been helpful to see, again, maybe people lost a little bit of muscle, but maybe their grip strength improved. Maybe they felt better. Maybe they had more energy. So I will leave these, um, I will leave these studies and more down below, read through them, let me know what you think. But I'm just also gonna add my clinical experience, which is after having treated hundreds, if not thousands of people with these medications is that it's just not something that I am seeing as a byproduct for people. So now I'm not getting DEXAs and MRIs on every single person that comes in, but I do not want to be prescribing a medication that's going to cause significant muscle wasting. And what I have found in my clinical experience and what I have seen is if anything, these medications, when people are losing weight, they are just enabling them to be more active, more likely to go to the gym, more excited about losing weight, more excited to work out. I think overall, they really just help people take that next step into making these lifestyle changes. So yes, of course, I want people to eat protein. Yes, of course, I want people to strength train. I am always talking to patients about how important it is to build muscle, preserve muscle, and also because you feel better, right? Um, not just for a numerical perspective, but also just from an overall health perspective. These are good things to do, but I have found that these medications really enable people to stick with something more over the long term in a way that they maybe haven't been able to do when they've been working all their life to lose weight. So, and I say this as somebody who's treated people in their 20s, treated people in their 70s, I have some patients in their 80s, and really overall, this has had just a really positive effect on people's quality of life in terms of mobility and just being able to work out and be more active. So my takeaways are, okay, it's important to think not just about muscle, but muscle quality. It's also, you need to be careful in reading what's described as the loss. Is it lean mass or fat-free mass or is it actual muscle and how is that measured? Maybe there is a little muscle loss, but likely that is offset by a gain in muscle quality and that's gonna overall contribute more to somebody's health and quality of life. So let me know what you think. Let me know what your experience is. Let me know what questions you have. Um, if you wanna work with me directly, if you are somebody on a GLP-1 and you are like, I am not getting, I'm spending money here and I'm not getting the results that I need. I can't get myself to the gym. I still have a chaotic relationship with food. I don't know what to eat. I'm very confused. We should chat and I will tell you all about how I help so many people in these situations and so many more. So thank you so much for watching and please be well.